Okay, we have now covered a bunch of object-oriented design patterns and I just quickly wanted to recap of uh, discuss what the value is with these and uh, important points are really that first of all the application of these patterns might change over time uh, as for example you see with the singleton debate that originally this was maybe used more than it is now and there is much more criticism regarding for example the testability of singleton so these things might change over time uh, then they very much depend on the design of the language you're using the programming uh, programming language uh, so in some languages some patterns might not be possible in some languages you might not need certain patterns uh, and the concrete implementation might look different so in the slides to this module i have also provided a reference for python in particular where you see a discussion of the patterns and you also see implementation examples because of course the patterns i've shown you i've shown you on the uml level uh, and how to implement them that is really 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 language specific and whether you need them is language specific as well so that's uh, definitely a key point here as well that it depends as always and finally uh, you should be aware if you're new to patterns that there is this uh, typical situations of having patterns everywhere uh, and that's the classic saying of if everything you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if you're new to this and you think this is a great idea, novices typically start just applying patterns wherever they can. Uh, and that might just be not required. So you should really think about, is it needed that I have a pattern? Does it really provide a benefit? Uh, Think, for example, of the observer and decorator patterns. They are very useful if you uh, write an application that is really built to, intended to be built on top, extended. So you want to have, like I mentioned, Eclipse a lot. You want to have a platform where people can build new functionality in new code editors, new kind of plugins. Then this might be very useful, but if you really already know that this will not be the case then it may not make sense to add decorators and uh, observers everywhere so really try to limit the use of patterns to when it's necessary so that's the uh, the idea of design patterns and that concludes our overall design and implementation module uh, just to recap, we d discuss these different aspects of, for example, having configuration management, having host target development, uh, doing reuse, these kind of aspects that you might not be as familiar with yet. Uh, then we went into the solid principles, so how, what are kind of guidelines to design object-oriented programs, and then we finished up uh, with the design patterns, with some of them at least. Uh, and the main intention here was to get you familiar with them so that you can write better programs but also when, whenever you look at code of other people that you actually recognize these things because often when you're new to this you really ask yourself why is the code so complicated we could just make this much simpler uh, but very often there is an underlying idea here uh, that helps you for example to make your application very extensible okay thank you for watching design and implementation and for this module we are done